Well, good morning. This is, uh, let me clear this for just a second. Oh, I can't get it to go. Ah, oh, here we go. We're after 11 o'clock on uh, Thursday, the 27th of October. And this is uh, supposed to be linear algebra class, but I'm the only one in the room, which is not a good sign. So hope someone may show up, but if not, uh, hope you are able to follow this. So we're starting in Chapter 4, Section 4.3, uh, page 166, Example 8 at the top of the page. We were talking about determining subspaces <coughs> of sets. We did one for R2 in example 7. Let's do one for R3 at the top of page 1, example 8, top of page 166. Which of the following subsets is a subspace of R3? Okay, here's the A one. W, okay, is equal to the set of all ordered triplets x1, x2, x3, such that, I'm sorry, x1, x2, and 1, okay? I think you might already know the answer, okay? Hope so, but maybe not. Um, where, such that, uh, x1 and x2 are real numbers, x of 1, and x sub 2 are real numbers. Okay, that's the shorthand. Okay, the B one. Another set W such that x1, or set of all ordered triplets x1, x2, comma, no, sorry, 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 I'm jumping ahead. X1 is your first one. I got that. Okay. The second element is X1 plus X3. And the third element is X3. Okay. Such that X1 and X3 are elements of the real number system. Okay. Now. Which of those is a, they're both subsets of R3, okay? Certainly, uh, X1, X2, 1, that would be, <clears throat> if you think about the room here, the wall to my right is the x-axis, the wall, the uh, seam between the, the floor and the wall to my right is the x-axis, the seam between the floor and the wall to the front of the classroom is the y-axis, and the corner behind me is the z-axis. That's your x, y, z, okay? And x1 is any measurement in the x, x2 is any measurement in y, and 1 is your only measurement in z. So basically you've got a plane that is parallel to the floor, but up one. Okay, up one unit on Z. That plane, that is certainly a subset of the real number system. I mean, of, of R3, of all of space. It's one plane in all of space. The question, is it a subspace? Okay? Now, uh, there's a couple of ways to go about showing it's not. The simplest is the zero vector is not part of that space. And that's one thing that is true. The zero vector has to be an element of a subspace. This one does not. That's the easiest way to go on that. Another way would be it doesn't obey either the addition principle or the multiplication principle. Because if you added two vectors, x1, x2, let's, let's give them names, a1, a2, 1, plus b1, b2, 1, you get A1 plus B1. That's okay. A2 plus B, uh, 
be two. That's okay. But then you get two, and two would not be in that space. Okay? Because that one, okay. Nor does it uh, obey the multiplication, the scalar multiplication principle. That any C times this vector would also be in the space. So multiply C times X1. CX1 is in that space. No problem. It is is an allowable thing. Uh, CX2 is allowable, but C times 1 is only in that space if C is equal to 1. It's supposed to be any old 1. 3, 5, 2, negative 1, any of those, it would not be in the space. But let's look at the second one. Could that possibly be in the space? What we have here is X1 is any value along the x-axis. Z, uh, the X3 is any value along the z-axis. Okay, and then x1 plus x3 would basically be values in the xz plane, which would be this wall over here to my right. Uh, you wouldn't have anything. I'm sorry, sorry, that's not right. The sum of x1 plus x3 would be how far up you're on x2, okay? So let's go, say you go one unit out on X1, two units on X3, then you'd be three units on X, on Y, on the Y axis. Let me say that again. One unit out the X axis, three unit, or two units up the Y axis, then you would be three units. I mean, say that again. Two units up the Z axis, then you would be three units out the Y axis. And every time you did something like that, wherever you chose your X to be on the X axis and whatever Z you chose on the Z axis, add those two together and that's where you're on the Y axis. Okay? Uh, well, let's start from the beginning. First, the zero vector is there because when X1 is zero and X3 is zero, X1 plus X3 is zero. Yes! So that's it. Remember, x1 and x3 are any numbers in the real number system, including 0, so that certainly works for a 0 vector. Let's see if the additive principle works. If you had one that was a1, a1 plus a3, a3, and b1, b1 plus b3, comma 3, add those two together, and you get a1 plus b1, a3 plus B3, and then A1 plus A3 plus a B1 plus Z3. Yeah, it works. And and uh, scalar multiples would be the same uh, for some C times X1 would be CX1. So that same C times X3 would be CX3. And that would be leave you a middle term of CX1 plus CX3. Yes, that's right. Everything works. So the B1 is a vector space. It's not empty, okay? Um, it contains a zero vector, okay? And they, I said A's, they said B's, so whatever. And they showed it that number one, there's, uh, the, it contains, it's a non empty set. Number two, it contained the zero vector. Number three, it followed the additive principle. And uh, number four, it's followed the scalar multiplication principle. Okay? All right. So W is a subspace of R3. Uh, now, in example eight, Note that the graph of each subset is a plane, and this leads to those same three we talked about last time. We had, I'm sorry, we had three when you're dealing with the plane, R2. You have uh, four forms that could be possibilities of subspaces when you're dealing with R3, okay? So, uh, hi. <clears throat> okay. Note that the graph of each subset 
is a plane in R3, but only a subset that is a sub. The only subset that is a subspace is one represented by a plane that passes through the origin because the zero vector must be on it. Okay, you can show that the subset of W, the subset W of R3, uh, is a subspace of R3 if and only if it has one of the following three forms. So, the subset W. Um, the subset W of R3, okay, is a subspace of R3 if and only if these conditions hold one of the following, any one of the following. First, it's a single point, zero, zero, zero. It's the zero vector in R3, it fits everything that is a subspace of R3. It's not empty, has zero vector in it, that's all that's in it. Add the zero vector to the zero vector, you get the zero vector. Multiply a scalar by the zero vector, you get the zero vector. Yeah, it's a subspace. I would almost call it the trivial case of a subspace. Yeah, you don't have to. But. All right. Or W consists of all the points on a line but that line must pass through the origin. Okay, it has to pass through the origin because the zero vector must be on it, but all points on the line that pass through the origin, they certainly would not be an empty set. It contains a zero vector because it passes through the origin, and uh, scalar uh, or vector multiplication works because you add any value on the line to another value on the line, you'll still have a value on the line um, in scalar multiplication because all you're doing is scaling it up or scaling it back, and those are all on the line. So all points on a line that passes through the origin. Or like we just saw, W is all points on a plane that passes through the origin. Okay? Any plane that doesn't, it's a subspace of R3, but not a sub, I mean, a subset of R3, but not a subspace of R3. Okay? Again, all points on the plane because it's a non empty set. It contains a zero vector. If it passes through the origin, it has to. And then you add any of those two together, you will get points also on that same plane and multiply any point by a scalar and you'll get another point on the plane. Everything scales. So. And then the final and only other one that could be was W would be all of R3. Okay. Nothing in between those three. Single point, single line that passes through the origin, single plane that passes through the origin, or uh, all of the R3. Only three options. Now, there's another linear algebra applied at the bottom, and this is talking about excuse me, <clears throat> digital signal processing. Okay? Uh, and it converts continuous signals into discrete sequences that can be used uh, by this digital devices. And they probably still have a few things that made these kind of conversions. It's about everything today is all digital. But if you had, say, an analog camera or something else, you can change, uh, you can find the technology today that probably will convert you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you.
that finishes 4-3. I was going to see if there's anything else I need to say there. There is a uh, source you can go to, and if you choose to write a topic on that, that source is perfectly okay to use. You just can't use the words that are here in the text. You need to get from an outside source, and that source is certainly fine. Others would be fine, too. So homework exercises here. Do any of the odds 1 through 5, any of the odds 7 through 19, <clears throat> any of the odds 21 to 27, any of the odds 29 to 35, any of the odds 37 to 41, and then there's a couple of true false. You can certainly do those if you choose. And then there's a... Uh, uh, I would say choose the ones you want to work beyond 43, which is the true false one. Uh, choose any of the odds 45 through 49. And then the rest of these are proofs. And that would be 51 through 59. Okay. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm getting more and more clogged up. So I got something in the break, and I know we've only been going just barely 15 minutes or a little over 15 minutes since then. But I think I'm going to have to get, get something else. So I'm going to pause this for just... All right. Sorry I had to stop. <clears throat> I cleared my head, you know, got rid of some stuff. I don't feel a lot better I also drank something to loosen my throat, so hopefully I can go the rest of the time. Okay, now we're moving to section 4.4, which deals, which deals with spanning sets and linear independence. Now, I know that Cameron and Javon are in both of the my uh, upper-level classes. We've been talking about linear independence and uh, differential equations. Now we're going to get to it in linear algebra. So you should get used to this out a lot. Objectives here write a linear combination of a set of vectors in a vector space. Determine whether a set S of vectors in a vector space V is a spanning set of V. Obviously we need to know what a spanning set is. And determine whether a set of vectors in a vector space is linearly independent. Okay, three objectives here. Let's start with linear combinations of vectors in a vector space. The section begins with the developed procedures for representing each vector in a vector space as a linear combination of a select number of vectors in the space. We'll be talking about what that number is and how you go about selecting those and how we name them and that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> let's start with the definition. Linear combination of vectors. This should be familiar to some of you anyway. A vector V, okay, in a vector space, capital V, Little v with an error over it is a vector. Capital V is your vector space. And it's called a linear combination. Okay. Of the vectors. Uh, U1, U2, I can hear Cameron now saying something about a singing group, dot, 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 to U sub K in the vector space V, same vector space, when V, the vector that we're saying, a vector V, the one that we're studying here, can be written of the form uh, 
in the form that's what I thought I said. said of I said that doesn't make sense in the form V is equal to some linear combination C1 times U1 plus C2 times U2 plus dot 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 plus C3 uh, Cn times U sub n. No, K. Yeah, sorry. You have to figure out what the counter de jour is. C sub K, U sub K. Okay. Uh, where the C sub I's are they? Yeah. Well, they don't go. They just say C1, C2, C3, dot, 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 up to C sub K. Or scalars. Any old scalars. Generally not zero though. I mean technically they could be but it just doesn't make a lot of sense. To... Well no no I'm sorry. In some vectors V may have no dependence on one or more of the vectors there so you could use a zero for sure. They all just can't be zero otherwise you have the zero vector and that's all you got. Okay. Now, often one or more of the vectors in the set can be written as a linear combination of other vectors in the set. And the next three examples illustrate that. And my word, it's getting cold in here, even though I've got the windows open. I, the sun just went behind the cloud, I guess, outside, and it just suddenly felt just really cold in here. Okay, here's example one. <clears throat> I think I'll go to a clean page here because this could take a bit of work, not much. Here is a set of vectors in R3. We're going to name this set S, okay? And here are the set of vectors in R3. Set of these three vectors, 1, 3, 1. That is the first vector. 0, 1, 2 is the second vector and 1, 0, negative 5 is the third vector. That's your set of three vectors in R3. We'll call this V1, this V2, and this V3. Now, almost a little surprising that you name those vectors little s1 because that's what they did before, but V is the most popular name for vectors. Shortly thereafter is U, and then you have other things too. All right. Now, what they're suggesting is that V1 can be written as a linear combination of V2 and V3. Okay? Now, what that's saying is that V1 can be written as some linear combination C1, or let's just call it C2, since you can name it anything you want to, but... Uh, Let's just use the symbol that so we'll keep them straight. V2 plus C3 V3. Now, this won't always be the case. It just happens in this case it is. Well, let's see if that's true. C1, I mean V1, Victor 1, is 1, 3, 1. And that's saying that's equal to uh, 0, C2, 2C2, plus vector C3, V3 would be C3, comma, 0, comma, minus 5V, C3. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Negative 5C3. Okay, now for that to be true, that would mean, uh, I'm going to rearrange the orders here a little bit. <coughs> uh, C3 must equal 1, right? Because C3 plus 0 must be, so C3 equal 1. Whoa, got that right off the top. Another thing that you could say from that 
is that C2 is equal to 3. Okay, from here, C2 plus 0 should be 3. All right, let's see if the third one agrees with those two. That 2 times C2, which is 3, minus 5 times C3, which is 1, what is that equal to? That would be 6 minus 5. That's equal to 1. And sure enough, your C3, the, the third entry must be 1. Uh, so that says that V1, vector V1 here, can be written as a linear combination. In other words, 3 times V2 plus V3. And sure enough, it is. Just take a look at it and see. Uh, three times, oops, I left off my two here. Okay. Three times V2 would be 0, 3, 6 plus 1, 0, negative 5 would be 1. Uh, three, one. Okay. That last would be six minus five. Okay. So sure, it is. That was the A part. <clears throat> B part, we're going to deal with new slide. Okay. Is what if you have sets of matrices, two by two matrices. So here's your set of two by two matrices. Set of first matrix is 0, 8, 2, 1. Second matrix in this set would be 0, 2, 1, 0. Third matrix in the set would be negative 1, 3. One, two. And the fourth matrix in that set would be negative two, zero, three, one. There's your set of four two by two matrices. That's what we're given. Now, what there Claiming here is that V1 is a linear combination of V2, V3, and V4. So that's saying that we're calling this V1, this V2. Now, they don't look like vectors, they look like matrices, but these are the elements of a, of a vector space. So they are technically vectors, not directed line segments like we're used to calling vectors, but vectors nevertheless for sakes of what we're doing here. And this is claiming that V1 is some linear combination of the other two, the other three. So it's saying that V1 is equal to some linear combination, uh, C1, let's call it two, C2, V2, plus C3, V3, plus C4, V4. Cameron talks, talks about explosive stuff. We're not going to go there, are we? Okay, let's see what we've got then. V1 is 0, 8, 2, 1 is equal to some linear combination of C2 times 0, 2, 1, 0 plus goodness my so cold uh, C3 times negative 1, 3, 1, 2 plus some C4 times uh, negative 2, 0, 3, 1. Okay. Now I hope you're going to see where I get these equations. I'm going to take the upper left member of each matrix. I'm going to sort of turn my things around be 0 times C2 minus C3 minus 2C4, that has to add to 0, okay? 
All right. The upper right entry in each one would have us at C2, I'm sorry, 2C2 plus 3C3 is equal to 8. Okay. Sorry. Right. The lower left entry tells us that C2 plus C3 plus 3C4 is equal to 2. And the fourth, uh, goodness gracious, my hands are so cold. The fourth, the lower right entry <coughs> tells us that C3, I'm sorry, 2C3 plus C4 is equal to 1. All right. Now, Just for funsies right off the top, let's take these two. We could set up a matrix, but we can actually do it easier this way, I think. And that would be minus C3 minus 2C4 equals 0, and 2C3 plus C4 is equal to, zero, uh, equal to 1. Sorry, duh, duh, duh. Yeah. Okay, is equal to 1. Man, I'm so sorry. Okay, two easy ways to solve this. Um, the one I'm going to choose, I have an ulterior motive. I could either choose for C2, 3, or C4, but since the second equation here has a C3 in it, I want to solve for C3. So I don't want to eliminate C3, I want to eliminate C4, so I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 2. Okay? So this will be a minus C3 minus 2C4 equals 0, and 4C3 plus 2C4 is equal to 2. That eliminates my C4s, and that gives me 3. I can't add. Well, my pen, there it goes. Okay. It's just one dumb mistake. It takes forever to correct. Okay. That would be 3C3 is equal to 2, which indicates C3 is equal to 2 thirds. Now, before I go any further, I want to make sure that it's not right. I've done something wrong. Let me see if I can find it quickly. Let me first make sure I've written my vector matrices right. Looks like I have. Oh, 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 there's my mistake. V4 is 1, 3, not the second row is 1, 3, not 3, 1. Sorry about that. Negative 2, 0, 1, 3. The rest of them are right. Unfortunately, that changes maybe not everything but lots so let's see what it does okay that means this is going to be a one three okay that means the first equation is still all right Our second equation is still all right, but the third and fourth equations aren't all right. So let's change those. 
Equation 3, lower left, is C2 plus C3 plus C4 is equal to 2. Okay? Equation 4, our fourth equation, which is the lower right entry, would be two C three Okay. Ugh. Um lower right. Su two C three got that. Plus three C four. is equal to 1. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go up here and change this. Minus C3 minus 2C4 is equal to 0. That's still good. Uh, 2C3 plus 3C4 is equal to 1. Okay my second equation. Okay. Now, I still wish I could solve for C3, but it's not going to be quite as easy, so I'm going to do what's easier and solve for C4. Okay. <coughs> By eliminating my C3. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2, so that's minus 2C3 minus 4C4 is equal to 0. Okay, add those two together and you get uh, minus C4 is equal to 1, so C4 is equal to minus 1. Um, yes. And that's what they got there, too. Now it's not too bad to get the C3 because the first equation tells you that C3 is equal to minus 2 C4, which would be 2. So C3 is equal to 2. And they got that as well. Now, that would be easiest to, to work with equation, the second equation down here. Let's see if I can get that to work here. Uh, 2C2 plus 3 times C3, which is 2, is equal to 8. So 2C2 plus 6 equal 8, 2C2 equal 2, C2 equal 1. And that's what they got as well. Okay? Let's just check it with that third equation. C2, which is 1, plus C3, which is 2, that would make it 3, minus 1 would be 2, and 2 is equal to 2. Yes, all of those work. Now, I'm going to clear some stuff out of the way. I think all this work down here, except for what my constants are. I want to hang on to those for dear life. Okay. All right. So what we've just shown is that V1, this V1, is equal to this linear combination, V2 plus 2V3 minus V4. And that's what they showed too. And they actually wrote it out 
that zero to the just plug in here a one plug in here a two and plug in here minus one okay and they get it and we've verified that <coughs> examples one it's easy to verify one of the vectors in a given set s is a linear combination of the other vectors because you are given the appropriate coefficients to form the next example of the procedure for finding is demonstrated which i've already been showing so this should go pretty quickly here too if it weren't so cold in here sorry about that and it was warm enough outside this morning i didn't need to wear a jacket to work today so i know that this outside was warm warmer Seven forty-five. Then it says in the room right now at whatever it is, close to eleven o'clock. I'm guessing so, or probably after eleven now. So uh, no, we started at eleven, so probably getting close to eleven forty-five or something like that. So let's do example two. Huh. Write the vector w. This is in three space one one one. as a linear combination of the vectors in set S. So I want this as a linear combination of these, sorry, three vectors in, in S. And these are a set of these three vectors. The first one being one, two, three. Which we're calling v1. The second of these, <coughs> 0, 1, 2, which we're calling v2. And the third being negative 1, 0, 1, and this we're calling v3. Okay. How you do it is Choose a C1, C2, C3. And that combination of those vectors should equal W. Okay. I'm going to write it down the way I'd rather write it this time. C1 times V1 plus C2 times V2 plus C3 times V3 is equal to W. W is that linear combination of those three vectors well if you were to write those out i guess i should c1 times one two three plus c2 times zero one two plus c3 times uh Gracious. Eyes are almost losing focus. <clears throat> I'm so cold. Negative one, zero, one. And that combination should equal W, which is one, one, one. All right, now if you take first element and those constants, here's what you have C1 minus C3 is equal to one. C1 times that, C2 times that, C2. okay, got it. Second entry gives you 2C1 plus C2 is equal to 1. Because third C, middle entry is 0. And the last one was say 3C1 plus 2C2. Plus C3 is equal to 1. Oh my word. Hanging on to the pen itself is making my hands cold. Okay. I don't see a real simple way to approach this one. So I think what we do is set up a matrix. <clears throat> Augmented matrix. 
just like we did way back, 1, 0, minus 1, 1. 2, 1, 0, 1. 3, 2, 1, 1. Row reduce. So that would be minus 2 row 1 plus row 2. Okay? So we're using row 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 1. Uh, <coughs> operating on 2, that would be a 0, 1, 2, Negative one. I hope I did it right. I'm so cold I can hardly think. Third one, minus three row one plus row three and then you row three. Oh, man. I think I'm gonna have to stop and clear my head again, but let's see if we can get this one done first. It's gonna be a zero. It's gonna be a two. That's going to be a three row one Yuck. sorry. Okay. That's going to be a three plus one is four. Goodness gracious. And the last one's a minus three plus one is minus two. I think. Okay. Whew. All right. Sorry about this. I was trying to make it through this problem, but man, that cold air is getting to me. What I want to do is Divide everything in the third row by 2. So that's going to make this a 1, a 2, and a minus 1. So if you can read my lousy writing there. Oops. Hit the wrong button. Okay. Ah, erase the wrong one. It's 1, 2, minus 1. I'm going to rewrite them cleanly because otherwise. Uh, 1, 2. Wait a minute. Uh, okay. Um, I must have done something wrong here because I'm not getting the right answer. I set up the matrix right, I think. Let me just make sure. But I think I've done something wrong. One of these two roads. <clears throat> Let me see if I can think through this quickly. Let me just make sure that I've got it right. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. That will be a zero, a one, a two, and a minus one. Third one would be a zero, a one, no, a two, right? Ah, that would be a three plus one is a four. No, that's what I had before. Two, four, and then a minus three. Okay. I'm going to redo that bottom row. Everything looks like I did it right, but let me see. Minus 3 plus 3 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. 
3 plus 1 is 4. Minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2. That gives me Okay. Now, I, uh, this is kind of sending me nuts here. Here's what they say, and they say it. Let's take this matrix right here, okay? And it says that has a non-zero determinant. Let's see if it does. Uh, What I think I would do is take the first row. That would be a 1 times 1. So that's going to be a 1. And then 0 times that doesn't matter. That's a minus 1 times 4. Minus 3. That would be a 1. I get that we do get a 0. Oh! Oh, wait, 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 nope. Sorry, I see my error, but I don't see where I made it, but I see what it is. Okay. The very first row. One, two, three, zero, one, two. That's a negative two. Okay. That's my error. That's a negative two, zero, one. I don't know why I wrote a negative one. Well, because I wrote it to begin with. I just copied it down wrong. Zero, or negative two, zero, one. That's where my problem was. So this is a minus 2 there and a minus 2 there. And that definitely changes everything. Okay. So let's come up here and erase those. Okay. Sorry about this. I think cold my head froze I don't know all right <clears throat> I could have left the, the last column but okay that's going to be minus two times minus two is four plus it so that's going to be a four there then we have a minus two plus one that's a minus one that stayed the same I didn't have to erase that the next one is 6 plus 1 is 7. And then the last one is minus 3 minus 2. Okay. That now is better. <laughs> Much better. Okay. Now, I doubt if I did anything right, but let's see. Uh, next thing I would do is do minus 2 row 2 plus row 3 is a new row 3. So that leads to 1, 0, minus 2, 1, 0, 1, 4, minus 1, and this will give me a 0, 0. Minus 8 plus 7 is minus 1. And that would give you a 2 minus 2 is 0. All right. If I'm not mistaken, now my C3 is equal to 0. I don't know what I 
I see what I wrote. I just can't believe I wrote that. Can't get the pen to come up. There we go. All right. Let's do that one more time. C3 is equal to 0. Of course. That says minus C3 is equal to 0. I'm not plug this. C3 is equal to 0. Okay? Uh, you know, they've stopped already. Okay? Uh, they say the coefficient matrix of this system, which we didn't do, I did earlier, and it came out zero. Let's do it again, and uh, it doesn't matter, first row again. That's one minus two times one is minus two, so one minus two is minus one, yeah. Non-zero determinant, therefore, this does have a system. And that's, they stop it right there. They say, so uh, it follows from the list of equivalent conditions given in this. If the system has a unique solution, any vector in R3 can be written as a linear combination of vectors in S. Uh, and you can include, conclude that the set S spans R. Well, the trouble is, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I've lost my mind here. I see what went wrong. I jumped over and started looking at example five, not example three. And that's where my problem was. Example three was absolutely correct the way I wrote it. Okay. Example five wasn't. Okay. I was looking at example five sorry that's this is this is nuts okay um, what we did before I'm not gonna go back and redo it all again sorry about this I I got on the wrong page here we had it set up perfectly but when I was doing the row reduction and we came up with uh, Yuck. I just messed everything up. Uh, yuck. Okay. What we wound up with, if I had done it correct, which I had the first time, um, but then I looked and saw the wrong page. Ah, uh, let me see. That would have been a 2. That would have been a minus 1. And this would have been a uh, 4 or 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay, and you see here that sure enough this, the bottom row is a multiple of the top row, of the second row. So if you were to do the elimination, you see it, it doesn't work. And now I'm looking at the wrong page again. Uh, the augmented matrix reduces to, and we got ones here that, okay. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry, it wasn't example three, it was example two. Set up exactly the same way, okay, uh, and what we got was a set of zeros here, okay, and when you do that, yeah, that's what I thought when I got it. Um, Okay.
Okay, again, I'm looking at the wrong page. If we look at the right example, got it, got it, got it. Okay, that's what it comes down to. As soon as you get here and you get that row of zeros, which I saw that we got before. <clears throat> Sorry about this. The zeros. Then we know this is a parameter. So this, what do we call this? This was the C3 column. So C3 can be any parameter. Let's call it T. Okay. So the second row says that C2 plus 2t is equal to negative 1, which means c, we've already said c3 is equal to t, c2 is equal to minus 1 minus 2t. And that makes c1 minus c3, which is t. Let me clean that up a little bit. Okay, minus t is equal to 1, so this implies that c1 is equal to t plus 1. c2 is equal to minus 1 minus 2t, and c3 is equal to t. Okay, now, so this system has infinitely many solutions uh, but every one of them is of this form. C1 is equal to t plus 1 or 1 plus t. It doesn't matter. C2 is equal to minus 1 minus 2t. C3 is equal to t. Pick one, any one. It doesn't matter. And you can have lots of linear combinations. W is some combination of the v1, v2, and v3. If I were doing it, I would say let t equal 0. And then you would have... Uh, 1, minus 1, 0. That would be a good linear combination. Uh, let's verify that's true. Uh, let's say 1, 1, 1 is equal to, what did I say? C1 is 1, so that would be 1, 2, 3. And uh, C2 would be minus 1 then. So that would be, I'm going to find C2, plus 0, negative 1, negative 2. Let's see if that works. 1 plus 0 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, and 3 minus 2 is 1. Yeah, okay. So that works. So any linear combination works. Pick a T, any T, and those will work. Not any linear combination, but any one that fits those. They chose another, they set t equal 1, and you can follow that too. Goodness gracious, what a pain in the neck. Now, I'm suspicious here. Uh, let me pause. All right, sorry about that. We have five more minutes. Let me finish. Let's do example three. So let me clear this out. Finally, I'll try to look at the right page and not get confused here. If possible, write the vector w, which is 1, negative 2, 2. I hope my throat can last five more minutes. Okay. Now, I'm used to writing vectors with angle, but I wrote this. And I've been writing with parentheses because I look at them. As a linear combination of the vector set in example 2. Wish I hadn't erased all that. So here's your S again set of these vectors uh, 1, 2, 3 uh, 0, 1, 2 and negative 1, 1 0, 1 and this was vector 1 vector 2 and vector 3 okay Let's see if we can write that as a linear combination of the others. Set it up the same way. Uh, C1 here, a C2 here, a C3 here. Add those together and you get the same thing as we had before. C1 minus C3 
is equal to 1. Two C one plus C two is equal to negative two and three C one plus two C two plus C three is equal to 2. Now that's the same matrix we had before except for the thing. So this leads to 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 2, 1, 0, minus 2, and 3, 2, 1, 2. Okay? Make sure I get it right this time. Yeah, looking at the right page this time. So our row reduction is saying minus 2 row two, 1 plus row 2. And that would give you a 1, 0, minus 1, 1. This would give you a 0, 1, 2, minus 4. Okay, and then down here it would be a minus 3 row 1 plus row 3, and that would be 0, 2, three minus 4, 1. Okay, now minus 2 row 2 plus row 3 okay that would give you a 1 0 minus 1 1 same as before a 0 1 2 minus 4 same as before I think close to it anyway this would give you a 0 this would give you a 0 this would give you a 0 and that would give you a 7, I think it is. No. Uh, I don't guess. It doesn't really matter what it gives you. Maybe they did a different row. This can never happen. 0 can't equal 7 or 1 or anything else. So therefore, this vector cannot be written as a linear combination of those, ever. Now, one of the reasons is, well, <clears throat> we didn't show this explicitly, but because we wound up with those first three columns winding zero in both cases, that says those three are not linearly independent from each other, so you can easily have a third vector out there somewhere in Three space, that's not going to be a linear combination of those because it doesn't have that extra element. So that's all we needed to do for example three. If possible, write that vector. It's not possible. That's it. All right, I think now we have run out of time. We'll begin next time with uh, spanning sets, which is the top of page. Sorry, we didn't get any further. But, uh, uh, very clogged up in this room this morning uh, on page 171 okay so we just barely got started whoa this is a long section too uh, so I think all you can do for homework problems here are any of the odds either one or three or both I think either five or seven or both Okay, we'll stop there because we haven't defined spanning yet. So, those plus the ones we had before, and that pretty much winds it up. This next, this is a long section here, so no will be all of next time on 4.4. Let's just look ahead a little bit. 4.5 basis in dimension, and 
4.6 rank of a matrix yes this is a long chapter folks and 4.7 coordinates and change of basis I'm guessing we may skip that one okay uh, and then application of vector spaces I believe probably we will skip that one. I may mention a couple of things in there uh, just because you've seen them in others and that's it so I think we'll yeah nearing what we're going to finish in four still got to do finish 4.4 which is a long section so that's going to be it for today